Anthropology, in general, is the scientific study of humans, human behavior, and societies in the past and present. Social anthropology is the branch that studies patterns of behavior. Cultural anthropology focuses on cultural meaning, and physical anthropology examines the biological development of humans and the segment that has experienced the most dramatic changes of the past decade with advances in genomics and the sequencing of not only modern genomes, but unlocking the secrets of ancient DNA as well. Where in the not so distant past, anthropologists, historians, and religious scholars would have heated debates over the ethnic origins of humanity's earliest civilizations, we can now, thanks to genetic analysis, come to a definitive consensus over the identities of our ancient forefathers, with the same degree of certainty used in court providing paternity tests or forensic evidence used in convicting someone of a crime. That said, scientists have been publishing their findings concerning some of the most exciting eras of history, from the identity of ancient Egyptian mummies, to unlocking the details concerning biblical stories known by billions of people worldwide. The tombs of ancient Egypt have yielded golden collars and ivory bracelets, but another treasure, human DNA, has proved elusive. Now, scientists have captured sweeping genomic information from Egyptian mummies. It reveals that mummies were closely related to ancient Middle Easterners, hinting that Northern Africans might have different genetic roots from the people south of the Sahara Desert. The study, published on 30 May in Nature Communications, includes data from 90 mummies buried between 1380 BC during Egypt's New Kingdom and AD 425 in the Roman era. The findings show that the mummies' closest kin were ancient farmers from a region that includes present-day Israel and Jordan. Modern Egyptians, by contrast, have inherited more of their DNA from Central Africans. Archaeological discoveries and historical documents suggest close ties between Egypt and the Middle East, but it is very nice that this study has now provided empirical evidence for this at the genetic level, says evolutionary anthropologist Omar Kokuman of the State University of New York at Buffalo. The latest analysis succeeded by bypassing soft tissue, often abundant in Egyptian mummies, to seek DNA from bone and teeth. Researchers carefully screened the DNA to rule out contamination from anyone who had handled the mummies since their excavation a century ago in the ancient town of Abusir el Malek. More than half of the mummies we studied had pretty decent DNA preservation, says co-author Johannes Krauss, a paleogeneticist at the Max Planck Institute for the Science of Human History in Jena, Germany. The team succeeds where previous studies on Egyptian mummies have failed or fallen short, says Hans Schroeder, a paleogeneticist at the University of Copenhagen. Now, researchers can hope to answer questions such as whether immigration drove ancient Egyptian population growth, adds Sonia Sakrowski, a bioarchaeologist at the University of Southampton, UK. The scientists obtained information about variations in mitochondrial DNA which is passed from mother to child from 90 mummies. Because of contamination, the team was able to acquire detailed nuclear DNA, which is inherited from both parents from only three mummies. Both types of genomic material showed that ancient Egyptians shared little DNA with modern sub-Saharan Africans. Instead, their closest relatives were people living during the Neolithic and Bronze Ages in the area known as the Levant. Strikingly, the mummies were more closely related to ancient Europeans and Anatolians than to modern Egyptians. The researchers say that there was probably a pulse of sub-Saharan African DNA into Egypt roughly 700 years ago, 
The mixing of ancient Egyptians and Africans from further south means that modern Egyptians can trace 8% more of their ancestry to sub-Saharan Africans than can the mummies from Abu Sir El Malik. The new data can explain why the ancient Egyptians were so tightly aligned with people from the Middle East. Was it the result of migration? Or were the Stone Age hunter-gatherers of Northern Africa genetically similar to those of the Levant? It's too early to tell, Krauss said, but there's a better chance now of getting answers. This is the first glimpse of the genetic history of Egypt, he says, but it's really just the start. So the DNA confirms that the ancient Egyptians shared genetic affinities with Europeans, Anatolians, and fair-skinned people of the ancient Middle East. That would make sense, as not only are the ancient Egyptian mummies blonde or red-haired, the ancient Egyptian statues of their pharaohs and nobility have blue eyes. The same deep blue eyes we find in ancient Sumerian statues of their gods and nobility. More validation comes again by way of genetics, by recent published studies carried out by an international team of researchers led by scientists from the Sackler Faculty of Medicine in Tel Aviv University, the Institute for Galilean Archaeology, Kinneret College, the Israeli Antiquities Authority, and Harvard University. Blue-eyed, fair-skinned settlers inhabited the Levant some 6,500 years ago, according to an international interdisciplinary team of scientists. An article released Monday in the peer-reviewed journal Nature Communications solves the mystery of how Chalcolithic culture got to the Galilee via population migration. When they mapped the genomes of bones from 22 of the 600 individual skeletons discovered in a massive necropolis near Pekin in north of the country, the scientists found a genetic mix quite unlike that of previous and successive settlers to the region. In the article, Ancient DNA from Chalcolithic Israel reveals the role of population mixture in cultural transformation. The scientists concluded that the homogenous community found in the cave could source 57% of its ancestry from groups related to those of the local Levant Neolithic, 26% from groups related to those of the Anatolian Neolithic, and 17% from groups related to those of the Iran Chalcolithic. The genetic analysis provided an answer to the central question we set out to address, said Harvard's Reich. It showed that the Pekin people had substantial ancestry from northerners, similar to those living in Iran and Turkey, that was not present in earlier Levantine farmers. The Chalcolithic era, also dubbed the Copper Age, follows the Stone Age and precedes the Bronze Age. There are already several DNA analysis for Bronze Age settlement in the Levant, including last summer's publication of research from Bronze Age burials that shows that 93% of the ancestry of modern Lebanese ancestry comes from the Canaanites. Now, the new Pekin genome mapping fills in a void of 3,000 years of DNA analysis. With the new study's conclusion that some half of the indigenous Chalcolithic people's genomes derived from ancient Turkey and Iran, it appears that these artifacts may have arrived during migration and were not merely as the byproducts of a trade route as previously suggested. The scientists uncovered some recessive genetic traits not usually expected in human remains from the Levant. Certain characteristics, such as blue eye color, were not seen in the DNA test results of earlier Levantine human remains, said May. The blue-eyed, fair-skinned community didn't continue, but at least now researchers have an idea why. These findings suggest that the rise and fall of the Chalcolithic culture are probably due to demographic changes in the region, said May. As I've covered in my previous videos, the 4,000-year-old mummified remains found in China of 6-foot, six 6-inch six tall, blonde, 
Aryan looking people near those massive pyramids that the Chinese government still tries to conceal from satellite imagery by planting trees on top of them are also from Iran, not Ireland, not Germany. It's the other way around. They are Aryans from Iran that entered into Europe the same way they entered India, entered Egypt, and even entered Ethiopia. As Herodotus tells us, the ancient Ethiopians were the fairest of all men. It is clear that the demographics that populate the world today, in most cases, are very different than what it was thousands of years ago. And the politically motivated professors and media should spend some time doing their job and teaching facts instead of social engineering and pushing cultural Marxist fairy tales. My name is Robert Sepper. I'm an anthropologist. Please consider reading my published books available on Amazon. You can support my ongoing efforts with a donation on Patreon. There should be a link below. Thank you to those who share my videos as I rely on word of mouth. And please don't forget to leave a comment. Your thoughts are valued and appreciated. Make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell for updates. And I hope to see you again soon.